Hello, Sabrina. I was popping was cracking this. Do you boss reacts to this R? G Vintage title. Shannon Sharp's love life is a toxic mess. This lady is a mess, okay? Her commentary kills me. Um, I heard that Shannon tried to drop these shirts that had That's Mama Shell on them. I thought that was so tacky and ghetto, and it made me feel like he did this all on purpose so he could try to profit off of it. I thought that was super, super tacky. Like, who does that? If you were supposedly embarrassed and you didn't want that audio to get out there, why would you then try to flip it and be like, well, I guess I can make some money off of it now? No, no. Very sus. Anyway, let's see what's going on with his love life. Let's watch. <laughs> Shannon Sharp is one of the greatest tight ends to ever lace up a set of cleats. He dedicated his entire life to football and told the Pro Football Hall of Fame, I ate, I drank, I slept, and thought football. That's all I wanted to do. I didn't take vacations. I didn't own a yacht. I didn't have a whole bunch of hobbies other than working out and getting ready for the upcoming season. After 14 seasons, 8 Pro Bowls, 62 touchdowns, and 10,060 receiving yards, he retired from the NFL and was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2011. Despite his accolades in the league, Shannon has been involved in some tomfoolery off the field. From his volatile relationships, recklessly spreading his seed, a steamy Instagram live stream that set the internet on fire. That's my Michelle. Uh, and of course, we'll be discussing those allegations. Law this is gonna be messy, ain't it? Before we jump into this hot, stinking mess, if you ask me to, I just might eat some snacks and keep Her these snacks, snack. child. Y'all gonna support it. Eat when them. he was three months old, when <laughs> Shannon Gold Shark was born in Chicago, Illinois. When he was three months old, his grandmother, who was already raising nine children of her own, took oh, a train oh. to Chicago to pick up Shannon, his older brother Sterling, and his sister Libby, so she could raise them in Glenville, Georgia. Shannon told the Denver Post, in our culture, when the parents are having a tough time, the grandparents take care of the kids. Okay, so mommy issues and daddy issues. Got it. At any given time, close to 14 people lived in the house. His that grandmother always prepared a chicken dinner on Sundays and hot dogs or hamburgers on white bread every Friday. On other days, they ate meatloaf, and Shannon told the Denver Post that he would always grub on possums, squirrels, and turtle meat. On Sundays, there was no food on the table. His mom would visit for big occasions. However, his dad had a drinking awesome. problem, and Shannon only saw him twice. The first time was when he was a young child, and the second time was when he was 13 when he went to view his dad in his casket. While at school, he was placed in remedial reading classes. In third grade, he was sent to a speech therapist to help oh. correct his list. They need to fire her ass. She didn't do her job. All right, you ain't shit. He found out early on that poking fun at other She's students would so prevent kids shady. from making fun of him, his speech impediment, and his tattered clothes. He said, we didn't have sleepovers. We didn't want anybody to see how we lived. But if I could make people laugh, they wouldn't focus on what was wrong with me. Mm -hmm. After high school, he played college football at Savannah State. He graduated in 1989 with a degree in criminal justice and a minor in history. He entered the 1990 NFL draft and was selected by the Denver Broncos in the seventh round. He was known as the mouth of the Broncos because he couldn't keep his lips shut for nothing. He told CBS News, they thought it was talking to garner attention, but I was talking to keep from hearing my grandmother's pain. By the start of his second season, Shannon was slinging his dang lang all over the damn place. He told Sports Illustrated that his three children by three women were all born in 1992. He said, I was stupid, but I love my kids, two girls and a boy. I call them, I see them. I love to call them and see them more, but I hate talking to their mothers. What? Hey, my grandmother no. didn't raise me to hate anybody, but I really hate hearing their voices. Now that's something to be said if you can't get along with at least one of them. If all three of them feel the same way about you. You shouldn't have put a baby in there. And I can imagine they hate hearing your lips when you call. They didn't make them kids by themselves. Stop tripping. Shannon explained that if he were a regular Joe Schmo making $20,000 a year, he wouldn't have any children. However, he truly believed that his children's mothers plotted on him after seeing how kind he was and how close he was to his family. Oh, Nobody sure. told you to nut up in them, exactly. Shannon. You did all by yourself. Your family wasn't in the room. Your grandmama wasn't in the room. Let's not play them games, Shannon, sure. 
As far as his relationship with his children, well, he admitted during an episode of his Nightcap podcast that he was a terrible parent. He said all he could think about was football, and the sport completely took over his life. As of this video, he has mended his relationship with his children. Good. In that same interview with Sports Illustrated, Shannon said he grew up wanting to have a wife, a dog, 1.5 kids, and a house with a white picket fence. But he knew that it was something he would never experience due to his own actions. He said, but it's my fault. I was reckless in my behavior with those women. He was extremely meticulous with his lifestyle and stuck to a strict schedule that included the same food every day except on Fridays. He didn't have a lot of friends and preferred spending time alone. He didn't know any of his neighbors and he didn't want to get to know them either. He added that even if his friends stopped by unannounced, he wouldn't bother opening the door because he hated surprises. He also said he changed his phone number once a month. Yeah. What are you? Okay. He kept his clothes neatly organized and all facing the same direction on the clothes well, tables. His pantry was perfectly organized as well. He told Sports Illustrated he even put everything in a special order in his bathroom. And one time, a girlfriend shifted his bottles just an inch and it drove him crazy. By the time of his 1999 Sports Illustrated interview, he wasn't interested in dating because he had a tough time loving women the same way he loved his mom, his grandma, and his sister. You might need to talk to somebody. You know, uh, you know, where you on the sofa, lying down or sitting up, and you know, somebody is on the other side of you with a, with a pen and a piece of paper taking notes. You, whatever you want to call it, that's, that's what you need to do. He admitted to being lonely at times, but he was never lonely enough to settle down and get married. He admitted to being selfish, and every time he got into a relationship, his woman tried to change him, and he didn't want to deal with it anymore. Many years later, during an episode of his podcast, he stated that he ruined so many relationships. He added, broke men will lie to impress a woman. A rich man will lie to test a woman. You'll not go broke chasing women, but you won't lose a woman chasing money, so I had to balance that out right. <laughs> He's very strict with his women as well, and even broke up with a woman after she passed gas in front of him. Men like this do have an issue. Let me tell you why. Because men like this objectify women. They see women as these That's pretty things that are not. Human. I mean, granted, I don't want you to do that in front of me either. But I'm not gonna break up with you over it. That's just stupid. Like women but take don't your ass pass gas or go number no, 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 no. two or belch. And it's an issue. It's a problem because when they objectify women this way, they don't see us as, as humans or with intrinsic value other than our beauty. Like we're just toys to be played with and then right, like And that's an issue. That's a problem. Being. Now, it, there's something also to be said for being ladylike. Now, if she raised her whole leg and just rolled over and let it out, that's different. He also said he would never use the restroom in front of a woman and would actually leave the house or send his woman to the store so he could blow up the bathroom in private. Right, in June 2004, his ex-girlfriend Erica Evans went to his Atlanta home to pick up their son. She said that at some point, Shannon lifted her up and placed her outside his home against her will. She went to the authorities two weeks later and Shannon turned himself in and posted a $1,000 bond. The charges against him were later dropped after Erica and Shannon attended a few hours of mediation. ESPN reported that Erica was one of three women who had been in and out of Fulton County Civil Court with Shannon since March 1994. There were reportedly 10 court cases between Shannon and the women, including paternity and domestic matters. Shannon started dating a fitness and nutrition coach named Katie Kellner. By our calculations, their relationship began sometime around 2007. In September 2010, a woman named Michelle Bundy told the authorities that Shannon forced her to knock boots, threatened her life, and was stalking her. Shannon denied the allegations. Nonetheless, he temporarily stepped down from his hosting duties on CBS's NFL Today show until the matter was resolved. Michelle was granted a temporary restraining order and later decided to drop it. TMZ contacted her and she revealed she had been in an intimate relationship with Shannon since 2002. She went on to say she decided to drop the order of protection against him out of fear of retribution. She also stated that she felt that she and her child's lives were in more danger with the restraining order in place. In April 2015, Shannon's beloved grandmother passed away. During a speech, he said he walked up to her casket to say his final goodbye. He asked her, are you proud? Granny, are you proud of your baby? Because everything I've done in my life, I've tried to please you.
He and Katie reportedly got engaged sometime around 2016. In 2017, an online personality by the name of Cynthia G took aim at Shannon and LeVar Ball for being praised for dating outside of their race, while black female celebrities are shamed for having white partners. Although Cynthia didn't tag Shannon in the post, he decided to reply to her directly by writing, not that it's yours or anyone else's damn business who I date, I don't date for approval and don't need you or others to confirm who or what I am. Enjoy your day. And that was just pure cap, but was just stated because black men and black women get shamed for dating outside their race. I would argue that black men get shamed even more than, than black women. Black women definitely still get shamed though. But I'm just going based on comments that I see and usually... People are like praising black women when they date outside their race. It's just like, oh girl, he fine. Da, da, da. But you know, when when I see black athletes with white women, you look at the comments and they're just like, see, look, they always <laughs> they always gotta go find them a white girl. Mm, they're always surprised, you know. People usually talk bullshit. Based on what I see. He and Katie moved to L.A., and by 2017, their 10-year relationship was over. I'm sorry, but all I can think about is how he was with somebody for 10 years and uh, never used the bathroom in front of them. What did they do when they traveled? Did he think Katie never pooted? <laughs> Katie don't poop? <laughs> Katie quickly moved on and married former baseball player Marlon Bird. They welcomed a child, and Katie filed for divorce in March 2020. As for Shannon, he decided to shoot his shot at Eddie Murphy's ex-wife, Nicole Murphy. They bumped into each other at a fitness class, but nothing romantic transpired from there. He stayed single for the next couple of years. During a December 2020 interview with Terrell Owens, Shannon said, I'm looking for someone to partner with, not someone to sponsor. Mm -hmm. I need you to bring something more to the picnic than your appetite. In January 2023, Shannon showed his entire ass at a Los Angeles oh, Lakers man. versus Memphis Grizzlies game after he got into it with NBA player Dylan Brooks. Later on during an episode of Undisputed, Shannon apologized to the Lakers organization, Dylan, the fans, the Memphis Grizzlies, and his stylist Russell Hollywood Simpson, who was sitting next to him at the game. I also want to apologize to my stylist Hollywood. Bro, you had an impeccable record before you took me on as a client. And I want to apologize for my behavior because you were in attendance. And if I cause any smudge on your resume, I'm deeply sorry for that. When Shannon mentioned Hollywood's name, everyone's ears perked up. Back in 2012, Hollywood worked as an assistant to Arizona Cardinals safety, Carrie Rhodes. In 2013, mm -hmm. someone leaked a picture of Hollywood and Carrie oh. all booed up. <laughs> Carrie denied he was gay, which ticked Hollywood off. From there, Hollywood granted Boss of Website an exclusive interview Good where he girl. gave all the details about how his relationship with Carrie went from being strictly business to blowing each other's backs out. We'll drop a link to Carrie's Boss of interview in our description box. Yeah, that sounds messy. So anyway, after Shannon publicly apologized to Hollywood for acting a plum fool at the Lakers game, online users started to dig a bit deeper into their friendship. They started to notice that Hollywood was always around Shannon, and they were constantly key keying at celebrity events. Now, is it possible that they had a business relationship and simply enjoyed each other's company? Yes. Absolutely. But of course, online detectives began accusing Shannon of being a part of the LGBTQ community. In July 2023, on Online sources began speculating that Shannon and Hollywood had parted ways. Although we're unable to corroborate this information, we can confirm that the duo are no longer following each other on Instagram. And that brings us to September 2024, when Shannon live streamed an intimate act on Instagram Live. In the audio, you can hear Unc getting it in with his bedroom partner, whom he called Michelle. That's my Michelle. So Initially, sure. Shannon claimed he was hacked. However, during an episode of his Nightcap podcast with Ocho Cinco, he admitted he wasn't hacked, and he was just extremely embarrassed that his intimate moment was broadcast on the internet. I'm embarrassed, someone that is extremely private. He must not have been that embarrassed, though, because he's now selling merchandise to capitalize off of the moment. Now, what the hell have them t-shirts gonna say? Or is it gonna be a Who picture of Shannon that? with a blue pill between his teeth? Because that's what they, that's the only reason. <laughs> We heard what we heard. Many people Seriously. think it was all a publicity stunt, especially since it's nearly impossible to accidentally go live on Instagram without pressing a series of buttons. Others think the stunt was a way for Shannon to put the gay rumors to bed once and for all. Either way, we're sure this won't be the last time Shannon's love life makes headlines. But until then, we're just... If that
that was the objective, that's stupid. Because <laughs> you can sleep with men and women. So that doesn't dispel any rumor that you begin yeah, yeah, your cheeks clap by men. Okay? I don't know what's going on with this man in, in, in the you know privacy of his bedroom. I honestly don't care if he sleeps with men. But, um, yeah, he does seem to have a very messy love life. Uh, so, yeah here for our entertainment i guess everything's public y'all let me know what y'all think though let me know what other videos you've been watching i'll see y'all the next time bye